We recently cruised on Celebrity's newest cruise ship, Celebrity Ascent, and we booked one of the most controversial cruise ship cabins that people either love or hate. Now, while we have booked an infinite veranda in the past and we've loved it, unfortunately, I can say after this cruise, it might be a cabin that we never book again. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, I don't wanna sound overly dramatic, but I have to say, having our infinite veranda on our recent cruise on Celebrity Ascent, I finally understood what some people were saying about not really liking this type of cabin. Now, it's not all bad. There definitely are some really good points about this cabin. I am going to share those with you, but I did wanna share with you some things that we learned after this experience with this particular infinite veranda and give you a little bit of a cabin tour as well, share some tips because I do think that that will help you to have a better experience if you choose to get this type of cabin on any of a celebrity's edge class ships. Now, before I get started, I did wanna mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Now I have to set the scene for you. We were so excited for our cruise on Celebrity Ascent. It was only a few weeks old. And last year we did sail on Celebrity Beyond. We had an amazing time and we actually quite liked our infinite veranda cabin. So when we walked into our infinite veranda this time, well, something did look a little bit different and it surprised us. The cabin actually felt smaller. Now, as we walked into our cabin, we had our bathroom to our right. And then right after the bathroom, we had a closet and we had a sofa area and a little living space, if you will. Right across from the sofa, we had our desk area with a set of three drawers, a little mini fridge and a desk and a mirror. And then we had our bed, which seemed to almost block the beautiful view that we were expecting as we did walk into our cabin and we could see the full floor to ceiling windows in the infinite veranda section of the cabin. Now the decor of the stateroom was just beautiful. It is light and airy and really quite a bright stateroom and there's quite a lot of good storage space as well. Now the way our cabin was configured, our bed was closer to the window, which was different from the cabin that we had had on Celebrity Beyond, but we thought maybe this could be actually a little bit interesting because after all, when we wake up in the morning, we're going to have an even better view of the ocean. Now that view does not disappoint. Now, when I woke up, I went quickly to open up the window. I really wanted to hear those ocean sounds. And unfortunately, there was this really loud whistling sound. Now, I thought that that was because of the wind that we did have that day. So we closed it up after a few minutes. It really was quite loud. And then we went on about our day. Now I will share with you what happened with that whistling sound because I think it is just good information for you if you are ever in this type of cabin or even if you ever have a similar situation on a future cruise. So first let's take a look around the cabin so you can know what to expect and I can answer some of the questions that people have had. So firstly, you are going to find that there are outlets both on the desk. You'll see them hidden in a little box and as well next to one of the sides of the bed, you're gonna have an electric outlet as well as USBs. Now there are no USB-C outlets, so make sure that you do bring an adapter if you do plan to use those. Now the closet is really spacious. You have of course your room for your hangers, but you also have some drawers. And I guess this is one of the good things that is part of this cabin configuration. There was more room next to the couch to go into the closet than I recall there being when I was on the Celebrity Beyond last year with the other configuration where the bed was closest to the closet. Now, I particularly liked these little small shelves that were good for putting shoes or handbags or any other little items. And this was a space that's almost hidden away. If you didn't look for it, you might not even find it. There are three really good sized drawers that you can put your packing cubes or unpack in any way you like. And next to the bed, you do have some small night tables with open shelving. Now, one of the questions that comes up the most often is, does your cabin 
get hot with the Infinite Veranda. After all, it is one window top to bottom. So on the most part, we didn't find so much so, but my boys were on the other side of the ship where the sun was sort of shining more during the day and they actually did find that it got a little bit hot. Now there is a thermostat, one of the best thermostats and little touch setups that I've ever seen in a cabin. Let me show you this. Basically what happens is you can adjust your temperature, but not only can you adjust your temperature when you're in your cabin, but you can also lift your blinds up and down and control your lighting. Now, if that doesn't seem like anything special, the part that is pretty special that a lot of people just don't know about is on your app on your phone, on the Celebrity app, you can find the little part that says Stateroom and you can actually have all of those functions right from your phone. So if you like your cabin to be a little bit cooler when you come back to it, you can actually do that right from your phone remotely. Or if you want the lights to be on before you come back, you could do that too. And I'll be honest, something that I like to do is in the morning, I like to make the cabin a little bit warmer and I like the cabin to feel cooler when we go to bed. So we were able to adjust the temperature and the blinds right from our bed. Now you might be wondering, does it get hot in the cabin if you open up the infinite veranda window? Yes, it does actually get quite hot, especially if it's hot and humid outside. Now, most of the time this wouldn't bother me, but I have to say for whatever reason, it became quite steamy in our cabin at different points and I actually did have to close that window. Now, the other alternative, and we did try it, was we could close those sort of bifold doors to actually close up the infinite veranda space and therefore we could keep the air conditioning on in the cabin but being honest it felt so boxy i felt really boxed in and i didn't love this and i can understand if there are two people in the cabin and one person likes to go outside so to speak on the balcony and the other person prefers to stay inside the cabin that the noise of the lowering of the window well it is going to be louder than opening up a regular patio door and if you do close those bifold doors, you have to move the furniture that is in the infinite veranda area, those chairs on the table, and that does get a little bit noisy as well. Now, everything has its pros and cons. So you might be wondering, what did I not like about this infinite veranda cabin? Now, it wasn't actually the noise, although that was definitely annoying. I did wanna share with you how that got resolved. By day three, we noticed that that was still happening irregardless of the wind. And we did actually speak to somebody from housekeeping. They were absolutely wonderful. Housekeeping brought the engineers in and they actually got that problem solved. So although it was solved probably on the morning of day three, it was solved completely. I didn't expect them to actually be able to do something about it, but they really did. So the moral of the story and the reason I am actually bringing it up is if you do have an issue do mention it. They really do want to help customer service or guest services and the housekeeping attendant and the housekeeping management. They were absolutely wonderful even at following up about the situation and it was completely resolved. Okay, so when it comes to the infinite veranda state room, I actually would book this category again. However, I would try to avoid this cabin configuration. Now, the reason is, it actually did feel smaller to us. We looked at the cabin next door to us, which had the opposite configuration, and it was like we had last year on the Beyond. So in a way, it was a bit of an optical illusion, but something that we realized is we like to have our living area, so to speak, that couch, the desk area, the vanity, we like to have that closer to the infinite veranda itself. This way, it really felt like an extension of our cabin. The other way, it just didn't have that same feeling and we found ourselves not really sitting out on the infinite veranda the same way that we had in the past on the beyond. And despite this being a very spacious stateroom, that area just felt, well, a little bit boxy, a little bit closed into us in a way that it hadn't when we had the other cabin configuration. So that is something that in the future, if I go on another edge class ship again, which I'm sure I will, because I think that they are an absolutely beautiful class of ship. There's so much to do and to see. So I really like this class of ship, but in the future, I'll be really careful to make sure that my cabin configuration has the bed 
closest to the closet. Now, I hope that this infinite veranda review has been helpful. I'd really like to hear from you. Have you ever been in this type of cabin or are you planning to in the future? Please let me know your thoughts, good or bad, in the comments below and ask me any questions that you might have as well. I'm always happy to try and answer. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.